Iranian and Western art critics have praised and been astonished by Mahmoud Khan Maliko Sha'ara Sabah's Istensakh, or transcription painting. What is unique about this work? Is our fascination a mirror in which we are faced with simplicity and creativity, or the painter's complexity and expertise? What was on his mind? What was inspiring his heart? Everyone thinks I'm a poet by profession, and so they address me as Maliko Shuara. But for a long time, I have had experiences in other fields. The world, for all its vastness, is too small for the men of the road. The vast world is too small for the man. The world in which Mahmoud Sabah matured and created his works was a world pregnant with currents and forces, which on the one hand were gripping the world for mastery over its sources of wealth, and on the other hand tried to find a new meaning and status for humanity. There was a new inspiration circulating in the air. It was the continuation of the European Enlightenment, which had spread worldwide from the beginning of the 19th century as a result of the industrial and social revolutions. Both in the heart of Europe and in the Eastern absolutist countries like Iran, which were under the influence of the ideas of legality and social justice, the primary contradiction was between tradition and modernity. Two different world views. This simmering contradiction in political, social and cultural fields led to strife and violence and ultimately resulted in the constitutional revolution in Iran. Mahmoud Sabah can be considered the best example and model of modernity in painting in the Qajar era. He neither lost his essence and his roots, nor was saturated in the principles of Western art. Indeed, the pillars of his perspective were innovation and creating new images by mixing Iranian artistic tradition with the principles and rules of European painting. Mahmoud Tabar was born in 1808 in Tehran. His genealogy is linked to Kurdish Domboli clan, who were military commanders in Safavid, Iran. After participating in many battles, they migrated to Kashan for personal reasons. His grandfather was Fat Ali Khan Sabah Kashani, Maliko Sha'ara, poet laureate of the court of the Qajar Fat Ali Shah. His father was Muhammad Hussein Khan Andalib. His uncle was Muhammad Qasim Khan, who bore the sobriquet Farooq who taught the child the common sciences in those days, that is, the basics of art, science, and spirituality. Mahmoud Sabah inherited from his father the title Malik al-Shu'ara of the court of the Qajar Muhammad Shah. Since he was naturally graceful and talented, he was favored by Muhammad Shah and his courtiers. 
From his youth, he was selected to be Allah Quli Khan's steward. Once, I headed for Burujer in the company of Ali Quli Khan Ilkhani as his steward. The only thing I gained on that journey was the acquaintance of a mystic, an unpretentious sapient, refined and pure. Sayyid Ali Mirza began an inner journey in me, which engaged me till the end of my life. Sometimes I contemplate, who am I? An ardor poet of nature? A balladier of life? A painter who observes the world around? But then I say to myself that I'm nothing, a speck without grandeur, who craves the sun, the mystic follows the state of his heart, and the heart every instant, craving imminent, seeks an air of novelty. The mystic has nothing to do but to eye the world of creation. Mahmoud Sabah's most prominent feature, which distinguishes him from his contemporary painters, is that while he is committed to tradition, he has a good sense of revolutionary innovation. He is both a traditionalist and an iconoclast, and these two features are manifested in the same painting in many of his works. The first branch of Qajar painting, to a large extent, belonged to the Safavid world of painting and fresco. The last Safavid era painters, such as Muhammad Zaman and Ali Ghuli Beg Jobedar, gradually took their distance from Reza Abbasi's style of painting, and inspired by the Indo-European school, and following the rules of perspective and using oil colors, set the stage for the schools of painting, which would succeed it. In the age of Fat Ali Shah, painters such as Mehr Ali, Mirza Baba, Muhammad Hassan, and Abdullah founded a symmetric, decorative, and very colorful style by reforming the styles common in the Zand era schools of painting. The second branch of Qajar painting is the story of a few artists who searched for balance between a spreading European art and culture and Iran's background of rich and familiar traditional painting. Mahmoud Sabah, with the aid of a scientific mind and his own experiences, not only used the principles of naturalism more precisely than his contemporaries, but made innovative works by integrating Iranian traditions with European ones. In his precise and photographic paintings of buildings and other scenes of Tehran during the age of Nasruddin Shah, he used his great talent in perspectives and reproduction of the quality of light. Mahmoud Sabah is a painter of urban landscapes. It seems a single window sufficed to confirm and immortalize a world which was gradually taking shape before his eyes and entering a new phase. He is neither involved with the courtiers nor does he reproduce the plighted lovers of the traditional Iranian painting, nor does the daily life of the man in the street 
attract his attention. His simple and unpretentious works embodies international evolution and reflects his age and time. It is for this reason that his works had both artistic and historic merit. Most of his landscapes were executed in pointillist watercolour, which is difficult for drawing straight lines and precise decorations compared to other techniques. This shows that he was a very precise and patient artist. In his paintings, succinctness and simplification has two separate sources. On the one hand, the brightness and transparency of the colors, the symmetry of the composition, the dryness of the sketch and the partition of the layers of paint in his works reminds one of the limpidness, simplicity and stylization of Iranian painting. On the other hand, the way human bodies and faces are drawn and the simplification of plants and nature reminds the works of the pioneers of modern European painting. His mixture of colors has its roots in the old school of Persian painting's color schemes and is usually used flat in large and small scales, and as a decoration in order to create relationships between various parts of the picture. He was aware of the principles and rules of geometry in landscape painting and turned features and objects in them into simplified geometric forms and this sometimes created an abstract visual atmosphere in his works. The texture of objects and bodies, particularly walls and clothing, delighted the eye with the use of pointillist techniques. Although most of the surviving paintings by Mahmoud Sabah depict royal or governmental spaces or palaces, there is no sign in any of them of an aristocrat or the shah or courtiers. Each and every one of the people in them is from underlings and subjects. The Shah's primary objective was to defend his power against the constant danger of overthrow arising from treachery or rebellion. The country's ministers and governors were faced with conspiracies arising from their rivals, subordinates and servants. During the Qajar era, Iran was a country which had suffered defeat in several historic wars. Its treasury was depleted and its people impoverished. It was gripped by bankruptcy and famine, ignorance of the world at large, and dominated and humiliated by the Western powers. Mahmoud Sabah developed a photographic style and displayed it in a series of watercolors depicting Qajar palaces and gardens. His realism was graceful, pleasing to the eye and poetic work's bright colors were a sign of his novelty and modernism.
his view and understanding of nature were different from the style of Qajar painters who usually blindly imitated the Western masters in their landscapes. In his painting, Bobe Homoyun Street, his depiction of booths and arches along the street, tile works, men in the street, are all precise, delicate, and in particular, orderly, as if in a miniature. His work has another important feature, and one which is exceedingly rare among the other Qajar era painters. Objects, individuals, faces, expressions, styles of sitting, or their movements had their own identity. Put another way, everything has its own character, and people express something of the artist's aesthetic vision and feeling. All of this is an indication of a great difference between his style of expression and that of others. Mahmoud Sabah saw the world differently. There was a difference between his view and understanding and that of other painters, and he would express it in a different way. Mahmoud Sabah married four times and had six daughters and six sons from his second and fourth marriage. Last year, the expenses for the wedding of two members of my household and my wife's and brother's mourning became extraordinarily burdensome, and I borrowed a sum of money. The house in which I resided was divided, and now homelessness and debt has made me confounded and miserable. Dragging 58 family members and children every day, this way and that, is extraordinarily exhausting for this weak old man. The Imam Reza Shrine is the oldest of his oil paintings to survive. Although he used different materials and techniques, he used extreme precision and delicacy in sketching and coloring architectural details, inscriptions and statues. This watercolour is Mahmoud Sabah's only figurative painting, which somehow is a sketch for the later Estensach or transcription oil painting. He thus immortalised his uncle Farooq, who was his childhood teacher and mentor. I live in an era that in its dark nights, if one were to light a dim lantern, the wind would blow it out at a sign from the jealous. I roamed a land in which it was a crime for water to flow and a sin 
for a spring to be pure and lucid. I lived in an era in which a man could be bought for one morsel of bread and sold for another. In that bazaar, bowing lower and living abjectly would make you dearer to His Highness the King. And so it was that poetry meant singing the King's praises and painting was portraits of the king and his princelings. I, however, exerted all my strength to choose a different way and threw myself into a different sea to drown in different waters. Tiny, carefully selected and cut out pieces taken from stamps from the latter half of the 19th century. Some water coloring, perhaps a bit of oil color, along with the ultimate in patience and assiduous attention to detail. With the help of a creative mind and a heart yearning for variety and new forms. These and many other unspoken things were the raw material which went into Mahmoud Sabah's Collage of Egypt's Three Pyramids. This work undoubtedly anticipated the appearance of the art of collage in the Europe of the 1910s by several decades. Can one use this work as evidence that he was a pioneer in the art of collage in the world history of art? The painting Shahristanak Palace can be considered one of Mahmoud Sabah's most astonishing works. In it, the painter expertly creates an amazing, magical and supernatural space before the viewer. Couldn't we consider him a pioneer of the school of surrealism with this work? Mahmoud Sabah's Estensach shows a power of bold innovation. The shadows of figures on the wall are neither accurate nor realistic. They are giant shadows and lend the painting a special dimension and quality. Iranian and European classical proportions and frameworks of painting are broken. The painter consciously ignores them and goes beyond them something which was done in Europe by Expressionists some 15 years later. The difference, of course, is that in Europe, this aesthetical evolution was a living movement and current in the course of Western culture and art, and so influenced everyone, continued, and reached perfection and completion. This is why in Iran, this artistic ambition and mutation was the fruit of a single person's genius, and for this reason did not become widespread and was soon forgotten.
Thank you.